Congratulations to Team Nigeria for winning gold medal in 4 by 100 meter relay, men and women. Congratulations to Team Nigeria once again. Welcome you on the show. 360 Sport on Trust TV, um, Adeni Aji ah, Shafe. Just have to look at those stories there. Well, for the race that uh, to be a mutual one, we look at that story first. African Games to be a mutual actually completes a hat trick, you can call it, right now for the fact that she was able to do it. Let's look at that story. To be a mutual completes a hat trick of 100 meter hurdles. Uh, she, she actually won it again. 20 15, she won in 2019, and now 2024, the version of 2023, she has joined again. Three in a row for the queen of the tracks right now, they call her Toby Express. Uh, she ran the race of 12, uh, 12.89 seconds to win that particular race there ahead of others. Well, congrats to Toby Amushan for the fact that she's able to do it a hat trick of African Games 100 meter hurdles for women. Well, joining us to talk sport is our is uh, Joel Ajayi. Good to have you, Joel. Very well, good morning to you. Yes. Uh, you saw there the race of our life. Yes, that is a man. Toby Abushan almost uh, uh, got to the qualifier, but she was able to win that race uh, in 100 meter hurdles. And also, we also showcased the 4 by 100 meter relay for men. But let's start with Toby Abushan first. Uh, that particular race, she was almost uh, disqualified due to false start, but at last, she ran that race and she came top, making it three times in a row. Okay, let me first of all say congratulations to Toby Amush on our own, the superstar, the one they call Express this time around. And then I want to say very big congratulations to Nigeria too for the success of the young uh, lady. She has been doing it. Uh, I think uh, she needs a round of applause for some of us that are watching her every year. But I have my reservation on it because uh, there, there is no doubt about it. Nigeria is dominating uh, in athletic in, in Africa. But we need to have uh, to nurture some because now 2015, 2019, and 2024. So by the time we are going to uh, have all Africa game in, in another four years to this time, we should be able to have people that can just uh, compete with the like of. Uh, to be Amusan, so as to keep the the superiority on uh, uh, on the continent. So for me, it's a very it's a very good one for Nigeria because the lady has not disappointed us. The only thing I see is that she always uh, have issue of the uh, first start, and then I believe she will work on that, and then come to uh, Paris maybe in a couple of months. She will be able to do us more proud. Uh, I can say it without uh, uh, looking back that she has tried her best, but we want her to rule the world when the Olympic starts come June, uh, come August, by the grace of God. Well, good one talking about uh, uh, Toby Amushan there for the fact that she was able <coughs> to defend uh, that particular gold medal. Third time now in a row. Congrats to her. Congrats to Nigeria. While we're talking about uh, Toby Express, we also uh, go straight to the other one. That's with the 4x100 meter and also 4x100 meter for women. We look at that one. Nigeria clinches gold in women's and men's 4x100 meter relay. Uh, it was the race of their life that they ran, both in men and women. They are Israel Okon, Ekanem Consider, Akitola Alaba, and Ishekiri Ushelrishi. They were able to run the race of their life, winning the 4x100 meter for men, while Justina Taina, Yakobe, and Olayen Kao Lajde, uh, Abinu Shawa Fohan and Amusan also winning the 4 by 100 meter relay women. Let's quickly have a glimpse of the 4 by 100 meter relay women where they actually came first. To the women's 4 by 100 meters relay. And they are away. The final of the 4 by 100 meter relay. The Ghanaians are off to a really great start. But so are the Liberians as well. And for Liberia, it's Ebony Lee running really well. The changeover is smooth. The Ghanaians are coming through for Mensa. Mensa is running great. But so is Nigerians on Lachi Day as well. But look at Liberia. Strong changeover. Oh, the changeover is not smooth for Liberia. But the Nigerians are off on the inside lane. Right now, for Nigeria, it's 400. 400 has the lead. She's running incredibly. Hands over to Toby Amusan. There's no catching her. Her holiday of Ghana is chasing shadows. Look at Liberia's air colleague. It's Carrie Josephine. And her holiday for second. But Nigeria takes the gold. Liberia with the silver. Ghana settles for bronze. And Toby Amusan, the express, has brought Nigeria home.
That is how you run the Anal College. Barely one hour after, after an individual uh, gold medal in the 100 meter hurdle. She's anchored Nigeria home, aptly named Toby Express, and she has brought them home. That is world class running. But for the Ghanaian. World class running for the women there. Four by 100 meter relays for both men and women. We scooped the gold. Uh, Joel Ajayi, it was a happy moment for our uh, team Nigeria. Just like uh, a few minutes after Tobi Amusha, in fact, almost less than an hour after she won the 100 meter in Hodus, they also uh, clinched the 100 meter, four by 100 meter relay women. Both men and women, team Nigeria, are doing also proud. All I just need to say that is that victory is sweet. And then it's a scene of joy for us uh, watching them at all. And then I even like the commentator why he said that the, the next person following Toby Amundsen is chasing the saddle. So for me, I, I so much uh, cherish what they are doing in Ghana right now. And then I know that uh, uh, Nigeria is not small when we are talking about uh, athletic in, in the whole world. And then for us to scoop the, both the male and female gold, in the in the 400 meter race i think is a very good signal for us and there is a very good preparation for us as we are uh coasting uh, gradually to the uh, 2024 paris olympic so i i want them to keep the momentum i want them to keep the team intact let them work on their space and then let the preparation starts as soon as we finish this game so that by the time we, we, we meet at the worst stage, they will be able to replicate what they are doing in the continent of Africa right now. But for me, like I said, victory is sweet, and then nobody wants to associate with failure. We are proud of uh, the both boys and girls that are doing us, doing us proud in uh, uh, Ghana. So we wish them more, uh, more strength so that they will be able to replicate the same thing when we get to... Paris 2024. Well, Team Nigeria doing us so proud there. Well, we we'll give you an update concerning <coughs> the African Games taking place in Ghana. And you look at our teams, admission clinching the 100 meter hurdles, both men and women in 4 by 100 meter relays. And you just have to look at the joy of how the green, white, green flag is being hoisted there. And congrats to Team Nigeria for doing this. And not stopping on athletics, we've gotten about seven gold medal right now when it comes to athletics so far. Well, we talk about another story. This time around, it has to do with 400 meters. One of those days where the late Sunday Bada actually dominated Africa in the race of quarter miling. And right now, we have another star. His name is Chidi Okezi. Okezi right now has done well. He becomes African champion and also picks gold in 400 meter race. Uh, a particular record that has been standing for almost 37 years by Innocent Ebudike. Uh, right now, that record has been broken as he ran for the 5.06 seconds to win, uh, to win that particular 400 meter race in men. Well, let's have it how he was able to win that particular race in Ghana. <laughs> Looking at a particular race reminds me of uh, how Lison the Bada used to run for Nigeria in 400 meter uh, race there. Well, congrats to KZ. Last time he actually came second, he has been pursuing it from bronze to silver. Now, finally, he got gold. Joel Ajayi, the man has been running after this particular race to get gold, but right now he has scooped it after the last uh, person that was able to do it. I was in the Buniki, getting that record shattered. A good one for Chidi KZ. I think it's a very good one for, for the young man. Let me just uh, put it in that way. And, and then we can see 
the stages of developmental in his life. The last time he came second, and then today, or yesterday, or this year, let me just put it that way, he was able to uh, get the gold, which is the ultimate for the young man and for the entire Nigeria. So for me, I think it's a very good one. That's why I used to say it. Nigeria, we, are, we have talent, talent with talent. And then what we need to just to do. Okay, seems uh, the audio of uh, Joel Ajay actually hung up there. Well, let's continue with the show. We're talking about uh, Team Nigeria. Really, they've been doing so well when it comes to athletics. And right now, we've I've gathered so many medals in this competition. Athletics seems one of uh, it's one of our best, uh, one of our best uh, sports, and we've been able to do it. Congrats to them. And now, let's uh, quickly look at the medals table as it stands after all these races yesterday. Let's look at the medals table because uh, right now, Egypt are still topping with. Uh, uh, 167 in total, 92 gold, 41 silver, 34 bronze. Team Nigeria, 35 gold medals. We have 23 silver, 32 uh, bronze, making a total of 90. And you have uh, South Africa standing tall there with 29 gold, 30 silver, 38 bronze, 97 in all. Algeria following suit, Tunisia, Ghana, Mauritius, Eritrea, Morocco, and Ethiopia. These are the four stands so far. But uh, for Team Nigeria, uh, Joel Ajayi, we have uh, 35 gold medals. 23 silver, and also uh, we have got us of bronze there. Totally 90 in all. Still raising it down till Saturday when the curtain of this event actually fall. Uh, uh, with, the, with the look of this right now, I think uh, I am not a prophet of doom, but I always uh, speak from the angle of uh, reality and the true pictures of the story. I think Nigeria will, kill, will come second by Saturday because look at the, the, the distance between the facts who happen to be the Egypt and the Nigeria in terms of uh, gold. So for me, uh, it's, it's, it's something that we need to just look at. And no one say, no one say Nigeria cannot be, uh, cannot keep first because we call ourselves the giant of Africa. We should be able to dominate in every sport so that we'll be able to be at the top of the table. Uh, but for me, this result is not a bad one, but they need to just improve, improve on it so as for us to always be on the top of every event that is holding or that we are going to hold in the continent or even in the world. Well, talking about this particular table right now, the gap there for gold. 92 to 35. It means we, <laughs> we have to win double of our gold medals for us to get close to Egypt. And that will not be possible because today is Thursday. <laughs> we have Friday and Saturday. It, 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 it's, <laughs> it's very unfortunate. Look at uh, the Egyptian. They have 92 gold. And then Nigeria, Ghana, Ghana the whole, the whole, both the gold, the uh, bronze and silver, we have 90. It means even if we just uh, put it side by side, the gold that he didn't have won alone, he has already outweighed all the medals that we won in this competition. But uh, it is not uh, uh, over yet because we still have some uh, competition to participate between now and Saturday. That is tomorrow and Saturday itself. So for me, it's a, like I said, it's a good one. But we need to improve our need. The distance is much, and then we we need to we need to at least close that gap so that we'll be able to know that Nigeria is truly giant of Africa. 92 gold and 35 gold is, uh, is, is, is more than double. It's more than double, and then which is not good for the country. And then, like I used to say, we want all the sports federation to try their best. If you have the federation like uh, wrestling, the uh, federation like uh, athletic, the federation like uh, those, those federations that are winning gold, that are doing well. We need to just get more of them. All the federal president have to sit tight and make sure that there is development in the sport they are they are supervising or they are heading. So for me, uh, I, I, I said it, we cannot be number one this time around, but the result we have at hand is not bad, but we need to just see how we can improve on it and get the best uh, out of every competition that will participate.
Well, I'll be talking about our team there, Team Nigeria, doing so well in Ghana in athletics. The seven gold we've won so far, although we are still far behind when it comes to comparing ourselves with Egypt, who right now almost tripled the gold medal we've won. In fact, the entire medal Nigeria is having right now, 19 in all. And you can see Egypt having 92 gold alone. So, so far, this competition has been about the Egyptians. But uh, according to Joel Ajayi, our area of strength in sport should be attended to by making sure we, we put more attention on those sports like weightlifting, wrestling, athletics, and we look at those athletes and support them. After all, not everybody will play soccer as we always advocate. We need to give more attention to other sports. Like someone said, if you can give just 30% of attention that Super Eagles get when it comes to funding, so other sports, Nigeria will go places. We have the enough women, women that can actually do the business of uh, making sure we win things. All we need to do is to make sure we fund them well, administrative-wise, and making sure the athletes are well taken care of there. Well, Team Nigeria are doing so well in Ghana. And now we talk about uh, this particular one that has to do with the sports minister, John Owen Eno, right now. He has actually charged our team, our uh, women football team, Falconet. They'll be playing the final today against Ghana. Well, according to him, sport minister charges Falconet to defend Defend crown against Ghana princesses. That's the story we're looking at uh, uh, in this particular uh, time right now. African Games Sports Minister uh, charges Falconers to defend crown against Ghana's princesses. They'll be facing them by 9 p.m. Nigerian time, Ghana 8 p.m. It's a big one because our ladies want to defend this particular cup, and the minister has charged them that they should go out to make sure they win this particular uh, trophy. Well, Joel Ajayi, the team, they are defending champion. They are going for it again. Tonight is the night. And they've been told to go for it. Do you see Falconess scooping this? Uh, for me, it's a very, a very good one for the young ladies. They are always uh, prove themselves anytime, any day. And then for the sport minister to be charging them to at least to retain the trophy, and then it's, it's, it to me is like a motivation for the team. And if we look at it very well, it's going to be it's not going to be as easy as we expected because uh, considering the fact that uh, the final game is is being played in in, in the Ghana, and then they, they have the home support as there are twelve uh, players on the field for them. But uh, I believe uh, Nigeria ladies. They are always they are always be in the forefront, and they will not leave any stone unturned. That's why Minister is talking to them not to just uh, spare, spare any effort to ensure they retain it. It's not a crime if you can win it three, four, five, six times. When uh, Toby Amusa did his own 2015, 2019, and 2024, the world did not come to an end. And for this lady, we just wish them, we want them to just retain it so as to show that dominance in uh, of Africa in, 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 in the continent. So for me, it's a very good one for them. It's a motivation. It will motivate them. It will boost their morale. And then it will give them this sense of uh, support from Nigeria and even from the federal government of the country. So for me, I wish them well today, 9 p.m. And then I can't wait to watch them uh, winning the gold in the soccer, in female soccer, or in all these uh, African games. Hopefully, uh, Falcon to do us proud tonight, tonight as they play against Ghana Princesses in that particular game. Well, we hope that uh, they can scoop it. They have been doing so well in this competition. Getting to the final is an easy task for them, but they were able to do it. Away from that particular story, let's run through women football, the league football that was played yesterday across Nigeria, uh, where we talk about Edo Queens, Sunshine Queens, Ratels win big as league resumes. That's the story we're looking at, 2023-2024 NWFL there. As we look at that particular Edo Queens, uh, Sunshine Queens, uh, uh, well, uh, Nigeria tells also win big as league resumes. Well, as it is right now, we are at least uh, we look at all these teams that are playing. They're doing so well. Uh, the likes of Edo Queens being able to win their game. Let's look at the results of uh, that particular WFL Premiership match. The ten result of games played yesterday across Nigeria. As we look at that. We also quickly talk about uh, uh, well uh, the, the video. We look at the video of Atlan and also Coach Sabo Kala. Nigeria tells defeated Danas Ladies 3-1, Edo Queens 1-4-1. And you look at Sunshine.
Sunshine Queens defeating Robo Queens of Lagos. City nil. Uh, Ekiti Queens lost as home against Bayelsa Queens. Delta Queens lost against Remo Stars who pipped them one nil. Atlan one nil against Nasarawa Amazons. Abia Angels and Royal Queens play a goalless draw, and you have Conference Queens two nil against Adamawa Queens. Big one for Conference Queens. They are going to be talking after this. Uh, by the time we look at uh, the clip between Heartland FC, uh, Atlan Queens rather against Nasarawa Amazon. Afterwards, you have Sabo Okala. <laughs> Yeah, first of all, um, I wouldn't want to disassociate myself from um, the Almighty God. I want to thank Him for this victory. And um, as the game progresses, we found out that we had uh, one or two uh, wings that were not uh, measuring up and uh, we activated changes. And those uh, changes brought in uh, stability in the game. Yeah, we started slowly, uh, most especially in the defence, there was no cohesion, no understanding. But um, after some pep talk, uh, they came back into the game and, um, you know, we were able to come out with this uh, great result. Yes, we will always go back to the drawing board. We have um, watched this match and uh, thank God we have people like you on ground. We'll go home again, uh, look at the match uh, uh, at a very low tension because uh, the tension is high here. So there are some things we can miss. So when we take a thorough look at uh, the game again, we'll be able to look at um, where and where need to, to, to make some changes. And um, you know, we'll go back to the drawing board Still work on goal scoring, still work on a positional play. I know by the grace of God, before, we, before the next match away, we were able to come out with a good result. Sabu Okala there, the coach of Confluence Queens, that they were able to win their game. And you just saw earlier on uh, Heartland defeating Nasarawa Amazon there. Well, before we run it through, we talked about the NWFL there for you to look at the result. But right now, we look at this particular scenario in Nigerian Premier Football League, MPFL. MPFL warns clubs against ball boys. Uh, delay tactics is becoming too incessant in our football uh, business. And now they are warning all the clubs. Uh, MPFL warns clubs against ball boy delay tactics and it's becoming so, so uh, common right now. You look at this story uh, where we look at the letter coming from the MPFL uh, to the entire the MPFL management to the entire MPFL clubs that they should make sure they work on it. Well, Joel Ajayi, this is becoming a big deal right now and they have to write this letter to all the teams that they should warn their ball boys to stop delaying uh, boys. this platform last week i said the same thing and then i give kudos to the organizers of the league for the proactive measure in taming every issue that can bring uh, into the league if you look at it we have so many people that has nothing to do we sit on the bench and then their attackation their ways might provoke the coach might provoke those people it might it might be like uh, a fire for for some of the coaches that are on bench, and then for me, uh, the ball boys, I think is a very good one because at this stage of our league, which is the second stanza, there is no need for any provocation because if they are playing ball and then we are eighty five minutes on the pitch and it remains just five minutes and plus extra time, and then the ball boy will keep all the balls from the pitch. I uh, believe me, I, I, I didn't see it as something that we need to just honor it in our, in our league. Because the visiting team will not be happy. Because it is a way of delaying the time. If you want to delay the time, play your game. When you play your game very well, you can just play ball around the field without making use of all this ball boy and the, all this uh, unnecessary protocol sitting on the bench of the coaches or in, in the Premier League. I think it's a very good one for 
the organizer of the league. And then I said it last week. They are trying their best. We want them to keep the momentum. This is our league. We don't have other league. If we can leave our league and be watching the EPL, the German Bundesliga, the other leagues, we need to just make sure that our league is worthy to be watched. If it is worthy to be watched, there is no how people will not watch it because this is our home. For me, it's a very good one for uh, league, man, uh, league organizer. And then I, I think all the club owners and then all the managers, they will be able to take note of that and make sure that they, they do the needful in order not to put, in order not to subject our league into uh, bad omen or bad thing that is not good. Okay.